We're almost 100 picks into the draft, and now the 49ers are on the clock, and they got a lot of these late picks because of the Rooney rule. So, 49ers fans, welcome to the drafts. It's going to get messy, I'm going to be honest with you. First off the board at 99 is Jordan Battle. He's a leader on the defense. I think he makes sense in your system. He's just a guy who you can throw out there, and you don't have to worry about the safety position. Um you know, he could have probably gone higher last year, came back to Alabama to raise his stock, and it dropped a bit. But he's still that player. Alabama's defense just wasn't all that good this year. Next up at 101 is Caillou Blue Kelly. I'm a big Caillou Blue Kelly fan. Everyone shows that one clip of Blue Kelly losing out to Jordan Addison in their game. But he had Jordan Addison in his pocket for the rest of that game. I mean – He's a technician, very smart, not overly aggressive, isn't going to be grabby. He is going to use your body in order to push you off balance. You know, little taps here, little taps there. He has active hands, but not grabby hands. That is what you're looking for from a guy like Blue Kelly. Perfect fit here, in my opinion. And we're taking his teammate in the very next pick in Michael Wilson. Michael Wilson is a guy who people love. Love this guy, but we wouldn't take him in the first 100 picks. Why? Really, really bad injury concerns, but apparently everything checked out at the combine. If that is true, there is no reason Michael Wilson can't be a very good player in the NFL. He's kind of a switch up from what you currently have, wide receiver, but you know Shanahan likes to add in new wrinkles to his offense, and Michael Wilson could be the ultimate wrinkle, the ultimate changeup for the San Francisco offense. Next up at 50 picks later, we're at 155. Uh, we are going with Coburn, big old Kendra Coburn from Texas. Big defensive lineman who just eats up, you know, blocks, eats up interior offensive linemen, which is what you want in San Francisco. So your second level and your edge rusher guys can come in and make plays. It is a great fit. You guys just lost a defensive lineman. It just makes complete sense to have Coburn go to San Fran. And sticking in the trenches, I'm going with Trevor Reed at 164. Offensive tackle from Louisville. I think a very underrated player because he's very technically sound, but he needs to, you know, pick up his reaction time, pick up his speed, pick up his power. You got to work with him. You got to get him stronger. You got to get him quicker. But technically he's there. Hands-wise, he's there. Feet-wise, he's there. If so, as he's there, he just needs to be more athletic. But he's gotten this far, and I think he can go a lot further if you take the time to work with him. At 173, a guy who's only been playing the position for two years, and that is one Cameron Latu. A lot of teammates in this draft that I did not realize until right now. Um, Latu has only been a tight end for two years because Alabama needed him to be. He was an edge rusher, five-star edge rusher, I believe, maybe four-star. Um, but he came in and was an instant impact for Alabama. Played really well alongside Bryce Young. Um, was probably his most reliable weapon over the last two years uh, other than James Williams. It's going to be a work. It's going to be a work in progress type thing, but he gets to learn from George Kittle, and I think that is perfect for Cam Latu. And 173, it's not like you're really giving up anything huge for the kid, uh, and I think you can take the risk of working with him. Moving on to 216. Dang, a lot of picks in this draft, and we are at 216 already. TJ Bass, another just developmental trenches guy you can work with and if he becomes something awesome i don't know a lot about tj bass i know some people are higher on him than others i obviously think he's worth the 216 pick so that tells you what i think about the guy moving on to 222 i like that roger robert beal jr out of georgia a georgia addresser so you know he was coached well you know he's athletic you know he's got you know all of the things that every single georgia player has but you're going to have to work with him. He's a bit of a work in progress. Uh, doesn't have a move set at all. He just beats people with athleticism as of, as of right now. You work with, with him on a pass rush plan. You work with him on move set. Maybe you get something out of him, a nice little change up of an edge rusher every once in a while. Uh, a little wild card you can throw in there. And then 
what would a 49ers mock draft be without a running back? Sir Roderick Thompson, my boy Savion, loves Sir Roderick Thompson. He was at the Senior Bowl. I didn't see much of him because he was a late replacement for Roshan Johnson, I believe, who broke his hand and continued playing. Absolute dog. Uh, Texas Tech running back, big, athletic, not very fast, but he's going to push through you like no matter what. He's strong. He looks like a bodybuilder. Uh, at 253, a guy who people are either super high on or don't think he should get drafted. I think he should get drafted, but I'm not super high on him. I am the perfect middle ground. It is Jake Bobo. People think he could be a tight end. People think he could be a wide receiver. Try him at both. See what happens. Just take a risk here. It's pick 253. Like This pick is not going to matter that much in the long run, especially because two picks later, you can take Jason Taylor the second. He's a safety from Oklahoma State who was also a senior bowl guy, also a late replacement. Um, he's just going to be a good special teams guy for you. If he becomes a good safety for you, cool. You're not really worried about the upside with this specific pick. He is just there to make tackles.